Hey everyone, welcome back to Endless Money Pits. This is my 2000 BMW 328i, and today I'll show you how to install and configure BMW Standard Tools, a suite of BMW software including INPA, NCS Expert, WIN KFP, and Tool32. This tutorial was written by E46 Fanatics Administrator, Bali, who asked me to turn it into a video. It will show you the simplest way to set up the software for connecting to the computer in your E46. Here are the supplies that you'll need. A laptop running Windows 7 or higher and a charging cable. K plus D CAN cable with a switch. To make things easier on myself, I'll be referring to this as the K cable. Installer files from my Google Drive. WinZip. And if your car has this 20 pin connector under the hood, then you'll also need an adapter cable like this one. The first thing you'll need to do is go to the shared folder in my Google Drive account and download all three files. When the files are done downloading, go to your downloads folder or whichever folder you downloaded the files to. Right click on the file named BMW Standard Tools Setup and select Troubleshoot Compatibility. In the window that opens, select Try Recommended Settings. Now click this button to test the program. Click Yes to allow the program to run on your computer. Accept the default settings for each screen until you get to the screen titled Select Additional Tasks. When you get to this screen, uncheck the top two boxes for Backup and Restore Wizard. Click Next, then click OK to confirm that we aren't installing those features. Continue working through the installation, accepting the default options. On the final screen, click Install and allow the installer to run. When installation is complete, the computer will need to be restarted, so select Yes and click Finish to restart your computer. After the computer is finished rebooting, you'll notice we have some new icons on the desktop for the programs we installed. Before we can use anything, we'll need to replace some of the newly installed files with files from one of the zip files we downloaded. First, delete the following folders and their contents. Now go back to the Downloads folder, right-click on the file named ecapps.zip, and use WinZip to extract the contents. Make sure the files are being extracted directly to the C drive. Installation takes a long time, so I sped up this part. When it's done, you should be able to find the following new folders. Time to install the drivers for the cable. Click the Windows button, type Device Manager, open it, and click on the drop down menu for ports. If you can't find ports on the list, it'll show up after the cable drivers are installed. Connect the K cable to the computer and wait for the drivers to install. This may take a few minutes. If installation was successful, you'll find a new item under ports named USB serial port and then COM followed by a number. If installation was not successful, you'll need to extract the third file you downloaded named CDM21228 drivers setup.zip 
Then run the extracted program named cdm21228 setup.exe, accepting all defaults to complete the driver installation. Back in the device manager window, confirm that the new port name ends in COM1. If the port has a different COM number, here's how to change it. Right click on the port, go to properties, go to the port settings tab, and click on advanced. You can change the COM port number from the drop down menu at the top of this window. Set it to COM1 and click OK. Now the port name should say COM1 at the end. If there's some reason why you can't change the port to COM1, then you need to go to the C drive, open the folder named Ediabas, open the folder named bin, and open the file named obd.ini. Here you can change the COM number at the top to match the COM number that Device Manager shows for the cable. If the COM numbers don't match, the cable won't work. The last thing to do is bring the laptop out to the car and conduct a test. First, open the hood and check for the round port. If your car doesn't have one, then you can connect the K cable directly to the port under the steering wheel. If you're connecting under the hood, note that the adapter cable will only fit one way. Wake up your laptop and connect the other end of the K cable to it. Turn the ignition to the number 2 position so all functions have power, but don't start the engine. Make sure to turn off all accessories so you don't drain the battery. Now open the INPA program from the icon on your desktop and verify there are two solid black circles at the top of the screen. Well, that's bad. Whoops. Mine didn't connect on the first try, and I think it's because my laptop was closed when I plugged in the K cable. I started over and tried again with the laptop open, and it connected right away. When you see these two filled in black circles, then you've successfully connected your laptop to the brains of your E46. Now you can close the program, shut off the car, disconnect your computer, and unplug your cable from the car. If the circles are still empty, INPA has not connected to the car. First, try flipping the switch on your cable and reconnecting to the car. If that doesn't work, verify that the COM numbers are matching as shown earlier. On a side note, if you see these errors when running INPA, you can safely ignore them. These are common errors that shouldn't affect the programs we installed. And now for some frequently asked questions. Also, note that you should hook up a battery charger to your car during long sessions. I read somewhere that very bad things can happen if the battery dies while editing the car's software. That concludes this week's video. If you like my videos, consider supporting me on Patreon or donating on PayPal. I quit my job and I'm not going back. As always, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below letting me know what you'd like to see next. And until next time, just keep throwing money at it. <laughs> <laughs>